Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully, I'll Hi. Have you. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm afraid I'm going to be your only student today. <laughs> Better than just me. <laughs> I'm going to give them a couple more minutes. I know um, there was a session right before mine for some music folks, so maybe we'll get a couple more friends. Well, that would be good. <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, so I'll just go through this and hopefully I can get some more folks in here. Um, if not, this is recorded, so people can take a look later. Um, the, on the only thing I'm having an issue with right now is seeing, uh, who's with me and who needs in, so. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, so this is including guest speakers in synchronous learning, uh, how connecting with professionals in the field can inspire your students and enhance their learning. Uh, I don't know about you, but my students really struggled with continuing to be involved in the program, um, especially when we were online. Um, excuse me. So uh, they're used to hanging out together and being with each other in class. And unfortunately, um, when we are in this situation where we're doing digital only, they can't do that. So having something for them to buy in um, and get excited about uh, was really important for us. Um, so when I was doing this um, and I was planning this, the, one of the big things I was thinking about was name recognition. Um, who can I bring in? Who can be interesting and engaging for my students so that um, they will want to come to my class? Um, and so a couple of the things I thought about is what are we doing right now? Um, what activities are we doing? What pieces are we working on? And how can I relate something uh, back to those, uh, those assignments? So that meant for us that we were contacting composers, people who wrote the pieces uh, that we were working on uh, and bringing those folks in. We also thought about uh, how we can engage with other, people in the community. So the Maryland Symphony Orchestra is in our town, which is amazing. And they have um, educational opportunities that are available to us for free. So reaching out to them and having them come and work with us was really cool. So our students were able to talk to someone who made a career out of the field of music. Um, there are two composers were also uh, collegiate um, professors. So that was very cool for my students to be able to talk to someone who is teaching at a college and they understand how um, how students work in college, how professors teach differently. They could ask questions about 
how to get into college, how, what the audition requirements are, were, um, their own college experiences, all, all sorts of things. So having a broad scope really helped. Um, and I wouldn't limit it to just adults. You know, if you're talking to someone who's an alumni, that's really great. Um, or someone who's in the college experience working with this, uh, working in the same field that we're discussing. That was really cool. Um, and so my kids found excitement in, in doing things that way uh, and talking to these people that maybe they, they knew an aspect of their background, whether it was, I know that name because I played their music before, or I know the orchestra they're involved in, or I know the school that they're going to, um, or the school that they're teaching at, uh, that brought buy-in and helped kids to attend the sessions, which of course, you know, we got to get them in the door. We got to get them in the room. Um, and um, in this case on Zoom. Um, I'm just going to check and see if we have anyone waiting. Ah, Mr. Socks is waiting. Let me see if I can share. Uh, so I, I, those are just some of the things that I was trying to be aware of when I was reaching out to people to be a part of our program, um, our Zoom meetings. Uh, with the Maryland Symphony, we had students uh, working with professionals in the field, uh, learning uh, information about their instruments or someone else's instrument from them. And oftentimes we found that these folks were able to present material in a, in a new and a different way uh, that they might not have considered before. Maybe I didn't consider. I'm, of course, you know, I'm a director, I'm a musician, but I don't play tuba. I don't play trombone. Uh, so having these new folks come in and talk to us um, they were able to talk to the students about specific problems that they might have uh, run across when they were working on their craft or when they're teaching other students and students can learn different uh, differently. Um, the opportunities to ask questions from students that was really cool. Um, I did use a Google form because my students are really shy. Um, even, I don't know, Ms. Gaynor, if you've noticed that in your Zoom meetings at all, but with mine, the kids just don't talk. You know, even when I opened it up like a, hey, how are you doing? They, they don't say very much. Um, so when you- yeah, I, had, I, I had the same problems. Um, you'd ask them questions. I, I'd even th be like, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't often get an answer. <laughs> Yeah, so that can be really um, em embarrassing uh, or, or um, nerve wracking when when you're by yourself, let alone, you know, when you have a guest in, in the Zoom meeting with you and they'll talk for a little bit, at, you know, and I can talk about how we set up the, the session in all of our my pre meeting conversations with um, my guests, but um, you know, there's always that time for, okay, who has any questions and dead silence, you know? Um, so I made sure to have a Google form where the students had to fill something out. I just made it an assignment and I can show you, there's two, a couple different ways that we did that. Um, so um, let me show you how to do that. Oopsies. So um, this made sure that when they um, you know when you're in the, that meeting and it's time for questions that the the kids actually have questions to, to ask folks. So you can do something as in a, a, this is just Google Forms you know you can go into an a, uh, one of your preset ones. I always end up doing the blank quiz. 
and set it up that way. I would recommend, you know, you label it in a way you're going to remember it. So, you know, I, I would say, um, and then you want to go into settings and make sure that you collect email addresses. <laughs> um, and the reason I do that is because sometimes you're, um, if you don't ask them what their name is on, on the sheet, then um, you won't remember exactly who said what. And you, ideally, you want to be able to call on that student and say, okay, you know, Lily, you had a question uh, about the compositional process. Can you, can you ask um, Mr. Balmage is that? And then, oh, now they can go. Or you can, you can give them a private message and say, hey, didn't you have a question about um, how they got their start? And then all of a sudden, okay, the kid can unmute themselves and they have uh, more of an opportunity to ask that question. But you have this in your control. So you can do, um, I know some folks haven't done this before uh, with the, the Google form. So this is really easy. You know, you just label it here. Uh, and then you can write, I can never spell. Um, and then you can write what questions you have. You can even, um, uh, you can even do a, you can do a paragraph, you can do multiple choice, you can guide their questions however you see fit. Um, and then if you, then you can share this with them. You can get the pre-filled link this way. Um, and you can just click that there and it'll copy it and then you can post it in Google Classroom or if you go into Google Classroom, um, and you could post that right here on your stream. Uh, oops. Um, or you can go into Google Class Classwork and press create right here. And you can do a question this way. And you can just do one single question. So it's really up to you what you want to do um, for your students, what's going to work best if it's if them seeing it as an assignment within Google Classroom um, will help you, or if you, you wanna be more in depth, you can you know, go into the Google Forms and then you just post a link. So you can put, uh, add a, a link here and you can do your link uh, for the Google Form so that students are able to fill that out. Um, and when you're finished with it, you can, with what I love about the, the Google Forms protocol is that you can click on responses and you can see the list of responses here or you can click on create a spreadsheet and it'll open a new Google um, Excel file which you can name whatever you need to and that'll show you every, every question that you have. And then you can populate that so that while you're in your meeting, you can talk, um, you can see what the kids have asked and it's all there in one spot and you don't have to scroll down. That's one thing that I did struggle with with um, the Google question was that it, it made it a little bit more difficult to, to see everything all at once. So, uh, check your waiting room. I have a couple, couple oh. folks texting, I think. Hey, thanks. Sure. How do I mm, pause share? Sometimes if I scroll up to the top, it'll uh, pop down and let me I see. think I have to stop the share entirely. There we go. So what I do is I, I take that, I click on participants there at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you can unhook the participants list from the screen, like the window, and then you can leave it up while you're presenting, and it'll, it'll show you if someone's waiting in the waiting room. 
it's like a choice at the top of the participants list to unhook it from the the the, the window if you will and then you can just sort of move it around wherever you need it oh okay thank you <laughs> i use that a lot for office hours because you know you're sitting there in office hours and you have no idea if anyone's showing up so <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so, hi, Mark. Hi, Jess. Um, I know Jess is hi. still connecting in, so I'll give a second before I jump back in. All right. So, I was just talking a little bit about um, how I engage students and how I, a lot of my students tend to not have any interaction on, on Zoom. They are um, super shy and they don't like to talk even when it's just me, you know, even when it's just an opportunity for them to uh, say whatever they want and catch up with their friends and they're still uh, not keen on unmuting and having that mic on, um, oftentimes not keen on having the video. So um, when I'm reaching out to these folks uh, to have these guests in, um, I want to make sure that it's not just one person talking to the group and then asking about questions and no one says anything. So uh, what I was discussing was we have a, I always make sure that I have a Google form for my students so that they can write down a question. It forces them to think about what they want to ask. Um, and so that I have that catalog of questions for them um, when we do have those moments of time that uh, are silent. So I can message the student and remind them that they have this question to ask or I can facilitate it and ask myself. Um, a lot of my students really enjoyed having folks in. Um, so one of my students said, uh, with having this special guest join us in Zooms, I was able to look uh, for something not necessarily fun, but interesting for my day. And I was also able to get some time away from all of my work for that week. Um, so, um, so this is all about making connections. Um, helping students figure out how what they're learning in the classroom um, relates to the real world. So when I'm talking with with folks, I'm finding out how they got their start with their career. Um, what the kids often ask what courses they choose um, in high school and in college, they're very focused on um, AP classes and on uh you know are they going to do essence are they going to tech are they do how many languages do they need to take how many extracurriculars are they doing and how is that going to help me with what i want to do in life so they have um will ask these questions of, of the um of the guests so for instance with um with dr taylor uh, when he came to visit, the kids were very interested in why he chose the college that he chose. And, you know, were they looking for, was he looking for a specific name or a specific guiding point? And, and it was funny for him, he was saying, a lot of it for me is, how am I going to stay out of debt? And, you know, not a lot of our kids are thinking about that aspect when they're choosing their, their college. Um, so I thought that was different and an unusual. Um, uh, they'll ask about what they found beneficial, what, what kinds of things they did with uh, Mr. Balmages. They were talking about why he chose the path that he chose. And we realized that you know he wanted to get as much out of his college experience as possible. And so that was a different take. Um, so that's really interesting for them to find out just what other people are thinking, not what people that are um, perhaps, uh, a lot of times I find that the kids think they, we're, we're supposed to say a certain thing. So 
um, finding out from real people in the real world with real careers in their field, what, what choices did you make? Why did you make those choices? And how did they affect where you are now? Um, is really cool for the kids. Um, they ask about work-life balance. Um, you know, my kids couldn't believe that Dr. Taylor uh, threw uh, axes um, or that Mr. Balmages uh, likes to do rock climbing. Like, they often don't realize that, you, you know, you can have outside hobbies, you can do extra things, and, and that's really cool. And when you're playing music, uh, written by these folks to know more about their personal experiences and their their life um, is really cool for the kids. Um, and then you know the dealing with the COVID. Um, I don't know if you all have had much experience talking with your kids about um, how they're dealing with things, but um, I know a lot of us are really struggling with the isolation and being um, alone um, a lot more. Our, our kids are used to socializing. So much of for the music program is socialization. And now being alone I, is hard. So for the kids to hear about how it's affecting the professionals was very enlightening. Um, and I, I think they relaxed a little bit when they realized, okay, everyone is having these struggles. Everyone's having difficulty. Um, and, and this is how they're getting through it. And this is what they are saying. Um, um, so, Two of the folks that we had in were composers and uh, collegiate professors, but then we also had um, our Maryland Symphony Orchestra guests. Um, and for our students to be able to interact with these people is very rare, um, especially my kids. Um, you know, we will have staff members join us for the summer band camp, but we don't often get to have folks uh, with us on a regular basis or, or during the concert season. Um, and they don't have lessons on their own. So talking to someone on their specific instrument was really cool. Um, and what I utilized was um, breakout groups for this opportunity. Um, and so that this allowed, that allowed me to have multiple uh, instrumentalists at the same time. And so my trumpet section would go in and work with the principal uh, trumpet player. Um, and then my horn section would be in the other room working with the principal horn player. And that was an opportunity for my students to play and get professional level feedback on their instrument. Um, it was also an opportunity for them to listen to someone that plays professionally. Um, I know I probably have two or three kids that will actually listen um, to classical music, listen to actual band music and solos. Um, so being able to have them hear someone playing their instrument um, was really important for them. Um, and they could watch and listen to demonstrations. Um, one note with this that I would uh, just point out is to keep in mind internet issues and lag time in, uh, when you're planning this. Um, when I was speaking with the, one of the musicians that was coming to join us, he was talking about how they could do some warm ups and things together. But unfortunately with the way Zoom works and internet, everyone has a different internet speed. Everyone has um, just trouble with that. So even a two or three second delay is gonna completely mess up a, a synchronous uh, performance. So your students have to be able to play um, one at a time. You can't really do very much playing together. Another thing to keep in mind as far as internet issues is making sure that the audio, um, the background noise is turned off. Uh, in Zoom, we had trouble with that with the percussion section especially, or when someone's playing a rhythmic uh, uh, lick that's much quicker 
you know, all of a sudden the double tonguing and, and things like that, it'll start pulling the sound out and then you won't be able to hear anymore. Um, so just things to consider when you're going through it. Um, it might be in your interest to kind of play around with, with the program with another musician or another person if you're doing something sound related uh, so that you are aware of what's going to come through and what um, what you might have a challenge with. Um, so something that I always have to remind myself is that, that uh, the professionals want to talk to you and they want to relate. They want to talk to the kids that are playing their music and the directors. They want to help. They want to be involved. Um, so reminding yourself of that when you're uh, setting out uh, to find something to do is very important. Um, and they're also looking for new opportunities. Um, and you can reach out through web, their websites or email. You can contact folks at the universities. Um, if you're looking for area businesses to be involved, whether it's you know, um, for our, in, our, um, in music, for example, you know, sound engineers, um, you can contact the businesses that way. You can talk to alumni um, and former students um, and f find those connections that way. But the biggest thing is um, feeling comfortable with reaching out and uh, finding out what, what they're able, um, who's interested in coming to see you um, and work with your kids, because a lot of folks will be. Um, some folks are going to charge a fee. You know, and so finding out solutions for that um, is important. I know there are grants and other things available. Um, uh, and in that same line, just a couple things to remember when you are connecting with these folks is um, to make sure you're always filling out all the forms that you need. So one of them, anytime you have anyone in, um, is your volunteer form which you can get through your principal if you need. Um, this one's on, I keep these on our website for the band um, because all of the parents need to fill these out. All of my staff members uh, need to fill these out. Uh, so this is the form for that. And then you um, submit this to your administration and they submit it to um, the board and then the, the Kroll form, which is the other form. Um, and so these are PDFs that you can get from your principal um, or your, and you can send them via email or you can download them from our website if you want. Um, just some other things that the kids are saying. Um, They really enjoyed getting different perspectives on composing and performance. Um, they really enjoyed learning on their perspective on different things they encountered as musicians and it really motivated them. And so that was a really big thing for me. Uh, again, when we were, we were closed for uh, a long time, uh, you know, we might end up being closed again and so we have to be creative and think about new ways to get our students engaged and interested in what we're doing and keep them coming back. So um, I wanted to find a way to motivate my kids. And I know they, they get to hear from me all the time. They see me in class all the time. So in this situation, what can I do? What can, what unique experience do they get to have because they're stuck at home that they wouldn't get to have otherwise? And that's what really spurred this for me. Um, so what, what questions can I answer? What, um, I know for Lisa, I know, I, I'm curious to see if, if this is something that you might be able to implement uh, in your field uh, because you're not a music person. Um, yeah, I'm, I, uh, I lead, I'm the advisor for Science National Honor Society. And 
we would like to begin bringing in professionals of different careers to speak to the students about what they can do in science and how they got there. Um, and I've always been a little bit intimidated about how do you bring a speaker into the building um, because I don't know how to do that. And, um, and so I, I thought from hearing from the band students about how they were meeting with um, professionals and musicians, I thought maybe this is actually an opportunity to jump into something I've never, I've never tried before. Um, and so I really wanted to come to the, to the session here to, to, to get um, really the logistics of it. So uh, my first question is, how much lead time do you need to do those two forms? <laughs> uh, I'd say I would give it at least two weeks, if, okay. not, a little, if not a little more. Um, you know, every administration is different. It depends what their clearances already are. So like when we're bringing in a collegiate person, they already have some. If they've already worked with the Board of Education before, then it's much easier. Um, every administrator is going to be different with that. Um, if I can chime in on that one, um, generally speaking, they only need the volunteer form um, and that's, it stays at the school level. If, from what I've been told, it stays at the school level only if they are, you know, if they're coming in to present something to your classroom and they are not working one on one with a kid, then they fill out the volunteer form, you submit it to for me, it's my head secretary, and it gets approved pretty quickly. Um, if they are working one on one with kids, so that's our band staff, that's our chaperones, and things like that, they have to fill out the curl form, and then that's usually at minimum two weeks because they have to run a background check. So, so if if you're doing a if you're doing like a Zoom sort of thing, then it might not need the the background check because they're not even coming in person; they're just as long as you don't utilize the breakout rooms. So if you're using ah. breakout rooms and they are going to be one-on-one -on -one with a group of kids in a breakout room, then you would have to take up, take it to the next level, I would say. Got it, thank you. Um, Not to hijack. Yeah, no, that's great. I, and, and Jess, you have a different administration than we do, so it's always good to, to knock on both of those. Uh, the volunteer form is pretty easy um, to fill out. It looks like a lot of stuff, but it's pretty standard. Uh, and, and Lisa, all of our parents fill them out, uh, no problem. And I just, honestly, we'd go through both of them for everything, just as a standard protocol with the band, because, you know, chaperones and, and uh, things like that. So if they can all take care of it, you won't have any trouble whatsoever. And in this setting um, with, cause it does ask for your driver's license, you can do a scan, you know, and okay. send it that way. And I'm happy to work through anything like, like that with you guys. Cause you know, we do it every year. <laughs> and that's one thing to consider too. And so if you plan on making something an annual thing, you will need to fill that out every year. What other questions can I answer for anyone? Nice job, Lauren. <laughs> you, you mentioned pre-meeting pre conversations with the speaker. Um, I was just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, so, um, you know, when you're talking to someone, you want to set up a foundation for what you want to discuss. So for me, I, talking to composers um, with Brian and with uh, Ben, who are the two composers, I wanted to let them know what we've been working on. So when I talked to, to Ben, I, I, would, I said to him, we, we just finished working on, on your piece, Shattering Infinity, and the kids were really excited about the, the way you uh, did these different kind of, um, motifs and how you expanded on this idea and can you and I had some initial questions for him about you know where he came up with the style um, some of the the different techniques that he used within it and kind of guided the question that way um, so I started it from okay what do I want to know you know 
Um, sometimes if you have those pre-questions from your kids, you can guide the conversation that way too. Um, just what, what are your kids curious about? Um, but letting them know where you are in your curriculum is really important. So for him, he wanted to know, you know, how far along are we? You know, and by the time we'd set up this meeting, we were ready to perform it. We, the, the assessment was like the next week, you know, and, uh, and then we got the closure. So um, that was important for him to know, okay, the kids have really studied this music. They know it like the back of their hand. So what can I do to make it more interesting for them? What can I do to expand on that? Uh, and talk about the background. Um, and so that's how we started with the composers. Now, when I, I brought in uh, the former uh, drum major for the cadets to talk to the kids, and that was an entirely different uh, type of experience because he's not talking about pieces that they're working on. He's talking about his time in uh, a major drum corps. He's talking about, his experiences in uh, college and how that's working. So I wanted to make sure that I gave, I gave him some insight to what our, our program does and talk to, him, talk to him about the kinds of things that we were interested in, the kinds of things that we struggle with. So that way he had somewhere to start. You know, you can get really specific with the, the folks if you want to, um, it really depends on your comfort level and how much experience the folks that you've brought in have um, when you're trying to plan something like this. I always think to tell them a little bit about the class, especially if they're not from the education world. Like, yeah, this, this group here is a little goofy. They mean well. <laughs> don't, you know, don't be offended. Or this one, you may not hear anything. You know, you may not get any feedback, but they're taking it in and they're getting it. Or if, especially if they're not in the distance learning, uh, if they haven't done anything over Zoom, like, oh, you may you may get a ceiling fan. Don't be offended, um, you know, or you may not get any video, uh, just to kind of lay that uh, framework. So before they speak, they have an idea what they might uh, be in for. Yeah, I, I did that with anyone that I brought in for Zoom because it, it's so different. You know, we're used to, you know, seeing faces and talking to our colleagues. And that's, that's easy for us. It's not easy for our kids to do that. And someone coming in from the outside, not seeing that it's, it's a different world for them. So I had, um, I had a clarinet player from the Maryland Symphony come into my freshman band. And, you know, I had her talk to, yes, my entire woodwind section, but then I prepped her on you know, well, most of these clarinet players are going to be in my wind ensemble next year, and they need to know about altissimo range pretty quickly, you know, and she came prepared. She had exercises for my kids. She's like, I told her she's probably not going to hear anything. They're not going to play over Zoom for you, but she did have these exercises written out. You know, she hand wrote them out just specifically for my kids um, so that they had some something tangible to take away from, which is nice, too, so. That always helps prepping the, you know, the guest speakers. And you might want to prep the kids too. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking specifically of a, a certain sophomore that uh, Lisa, you may have had as well that, um, you know, we opened it up for questions and she's starting to ask, like we asked one, okay, what's your favorite musician? And he started talking about folks that aren't, you know, in our genre, which is great. The kids really bought into that, but then that's what she wanted to talk about. So, you know, you've got to make sure you, mm -hmm. for me, I was able, because I have the relationship with her to send her a private message and say, enough, <laughs> you know, without derailing the rest of the class. But it might be something where you talk to the kids too, just depending on what kind of group you have. If you have that squirrely group and you know that if you bring someone in and in your actual classroom, you're going to have four or five times that amount of squirreliness because they get to, you know, feed off each other. I, um... You guys have all been really great. I just want to thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the presentation and the information and I'm excited to, 
give this a try next year, <laughs> oh, whether we're in or out. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? Thanks, Lauren. Sure. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye now.